We need both neophobes and neophiles. Neophobes can be described as those who do not want to entertain new ideas, no matter how reasonable those ideas actually seem. They would much rather stick with older ideas, sometimes even if they cause a lot of harm. It's all about proven stability over any sort of experimentation. The right wing tends to draw in these types of people. Neophiles can be described as those who want to entertain new ideas, no matter how unreasonable they may seem. They would rather stay away from older ideas, sometimes even if those older ideas were reasonable. It's all about experimenting to try to find a new way of achieving a better life, sometimes even if it's taking a huge risk. The left wing tends to draw in these types of people. We will always have both types of people in our society, and there are people who fall somewhere between those two extremes. I tend to fall on the side of a neophile, but I really try hard to recognize when there is an older idea that actually works and causes very little harm. I tend to be a neophobe when it comes to changing definitions of important words, but I'm a neophile when it comes to creating new words, provided they're within a context that makes sense. For instance, I have no problem with finding new words to describe one's identity, provided it's not put into the category of gender, and provided it doesn't completely destroy an entire function of grammar. People can find new words and phrases to describe everything they have ever liked, enjoyed, felt like, wished for, think of themselves as, and whatnot, but those things should not be considered their gender. That's the wrong way to categorize it. That'd be like stating that an emotion is merely a part of one's sexual orientation, or that how you walk is actually a description of how you drive, or that how you see clouds in the sky is a description of how much water it takes to make you feel thoroughly wet when taking a shower, or that pain levels are the same as the time it takes to accumulate enough holes to fill the Albert Hall. So, when it comes to neophiles and neophobes, we have to remember that there is no way to remove either polar opposite. It's just not going to work. Our society is like a machine or a living thing that requires polar opposites to function. We are a society of systems, polar opposites, and rules, whether those rules are written or not. The random element within those systems and rules is what makes watching a sports game an interesting thing for many people. Right now, we are at a major crossroads when it comes to who is a neophobe and who is a neophile. A major swap appears to be happening, and it is seriously affecting the way we define political party affiliations. I hope this results in there being more than two parties here in the United States, but that's doubtful, so it seems like Democrats are experiencing a swap with Republicans when it comes to who is currently totalitarian-prone. This happened once before when it came to slavery. Originally, the Democrats were pro-slavery, and then they essentially swapped with Republicans. This sort of thing is bound to happen when significant new ideas become old, and significant old ideas start to seem new. And some of this is because of the way history is being taught and analyzed. We're not focusing enough on looking at patterns that show up differently when they appear again. For instance, we're never actually going to have another Hitler in a first world country but we can have some of the patterns that came with Hitler's rise. There's never going to be another Spanish Inquisition, but there are things we can do that have some of the same patterns if you look at it from a historical perspective. On a global level, the United States has been a terrorist state for several decades now. We don't go into countries because the people there actually need help. We go in to essentially make people afraid of the United States, which more often than not allows our government to get what it wants. There are many parallels we can draw between the patterns of the United States for the past several decades and other historical events, but many people won't see it because it's not exactly the same thing that happened in the past. So as new becomes old and old becomes new, and we're watching our concept of media change radically, and media has herded us around for probably a hundred years, particularly when we became addicted to television. And now that we're not being herded around anymore, well, we're still being herded around, but not nearly like we were. We're seeing some major changes. And right now, we can't even really make a reasonable guess as to how this is going to play out. We're in the middle of a reality TV show. Suspense.